You know what? I want to make something very clear. Today's video is not at all about fashion. Today's video is actually about a practical way for fishermen to spend more time catching fish and less time messing with their stuff. Floral shorts, chacos, sun shirt, mustache. It's not about fashion. I cannot emphasize that enough. Okay, so you're wondering what the heck is it that I'm talking about? Well, boom, bam, bing, bow. That's right, folks, we're talking fanny packs today. And let me explain, because I'm sure a lot of you are really not happy right now. Think about it. What are your other options when it comes to bank fishing? You've got tackle boxes, you've got tackle bags, you've got backpacks. All of these are fine. But let me explain why a fanny pack is better. I could sit here and talk to you about why a fanny pack is better, but rather than that, let's go fishing and I'll explain as I'm fishing. Okay, just because this is what I have rigged up, I'm gonna go ahead and start with this Ned rig. But why the heck is a fanny pack so ideal for bank fishermen? Well, you can put a bunch of stuff in here. It's quick, it's easy. I'm telling you, it's all accessible too. And it's like within reach at all times, but it's hands-free. And I know a lot of you are thinking, well, a backpack is hands-free. Yeah, but we all know that feeling during summer. There's a bass looking at this. I've only fished this place once and it was like really early in the season and it was garbage. I don't know why I never came back. Oh, the bass is definitely gonna eat this Ned rig. He got it. <laughs> oh, just a little guy, but I sight fished him, which is always a good time. All right, see you, buddy. Well, that was easy. The reason that I think a fanny pack is actually better than a backpack, unless you need to carry a ton of gear, which for me, it's like, I don't think that you need to carry a ton of gear when you're bank fishing, especially if you kind of know where you're going and you've been there a time or two before. You know, let's say I've come to this pond. It's like, it's a clear water pond with lots of grass. Do I need to bring like 50 pounds worth of gear? Absolutely not. I can probably bring some finesse plastics. I could bring a frog, so on and so forth. So because of that, I want something smaller than a backpack. I don't need a big, heavy backpack on my back. It makes me sweat. During the summer, like, think how sweaty your back gets when you're using a backpack. I hate it. I hate that feeling. It's uncomfortable. I'm not a fan of it. The other thing is it's really not that accessible. You have to take it off every single time that you want to access anything. Who cares about fashion? If you honestly are going fishing and care about fashion, you crazy. I see a couple bass right in front of me. Oh man, I'm going to catch him. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love how both the fish I caught are about the same size and both of them were sight fished. <laughs> oh, they just can't stand a net rig, man. So much fun. Okay, so now you're wondering, Ethan, how is a fanny pack better than your standard old tackle box? Tackle bag, tackle box, whatever you have. For the same reason as backpack, it's much smaller, so you can just bring what you need. The other thing that I really like is the fact that you don't have to carry it. You can just have it right on your hip. I think the point is, a fanny pack's extremely practical, and I'm surprised it took me so long to buy one. I just recently got this because I was like, wow, I go fishing a lot from bank, and I hate lugging around a bunch of gear. This actually feels like a great solution. Oh, there's one. That one's a little bit bigger. Oh, missed him. He came and kind of nipped at it. Can't tell what these fish are doing, but they're very like territorial right now. Got her. <laughs> Best fish yet. Not a giant, but a nice one. Boom. Right in the upper lip there. Can't beat that. Oh my gosh, chill, chill, chill. Why are they so crazy right now? Buddy, you want back? You can go back. I'm glad I have my ultralight in the car. I'm thinking I might do a full lap with this rod and then do a full lap with my bluegill rod. As much fun as I'm having with the Ned rig, I'm actually gonna go ahead and take it off. And the reason is because there's a lot of grass in here and I think I might actually be better off with just like a, either a weightless worm or maybe like a little Nico rig or something. In the front pocket, I've got my pliers. Even though it's working just fine, I'd like to try some other techniques as well. And then I've got just a whole bunch of stuff in here. I just grabbed a bunch of different plastics and whatnot. I think I might just try a wacky rig. Grab a little weedless wacky hook there. And again, it's like, I'm not going to tell you the fanny packs for you if you really like bringing a ton of gear. But for people that are like me that know they're probably going to be able to catch fish on a few different things and they don't feel like bringing 10 pounds of gear, a fanny pack's actually a sweet option. There's a bite. Got him. God. It's been a while since I really got into wacky rig fishing. I kind of want to redevelop a confidence in it. It's just not something I fish very often. So that's why I decided to put it on today. That gummit, little homie spit the worm. Why did I hook him in the bottom lip? That's weird. That's one thing I really don't like about wacky rigs. I feel like you lose a lot of worms. So I need another worm? Okay, I don't have to dig out a backpack. I don't have to dig out of a tackle box. It's all right here, baby. 
I definitely will say that if you want to be good at like finesse fishing, I think it's key to have braid to fluoro. I think 10 pound high vis yellow braid is just so clutch. One, you can see the line move a lot easier. Two, it's just so sensitive that you can detect any bite. And then three, it's like you've got that fluorocarbon leader to where there's, it's virtually invisible. I'm gonna walk out on this thing. I bet you I catch a fish too. Let's just double check, there's no snakes. I'm not gonna step on a snake. Fanny pack, man. Got, oh, missed him. Set the hook too early. Daggummit. Got him, no! That happened twice in a row. Here we go. Got him. <laughs> I knew I'd get one eventually. Oh man, it ditched my worm every single time. I guess I need to get those little O-ring things. A lot of small fish today, but I'm totally okay with it. The fact that there's so many fish in here makes me very happy because I'm definitely gonna have to come back now. Got high hopes for this place in the future. All right, there you go, buddy. I'm gonna switch it up to a uh, Nico rig. A little watermelon candy finesse worm. Get us a little nail weight. Put the nail weight in the butt of this worm. All right, Nico rig. We're just doing all sorts of finesse today. There's a bite. Got him. There we go. Okay, we've put three different finesse approaches to work today. No big fish, but I haven't even seen a big fish yet, so I'll take what I can get. Little buddy ate it good. I'll take fish like this all day though. You already know that. You know what? Fanny pack for life, boys. I think the fanny pack has brought me good juju. Just let it sink to the bottom. Usually I just kind of keep my rod tip up, kind of just shake my slack. Fish it very similar to a Ned Rig. It's just a, it's a heavier bait than a Ned Rig usually. And it's obviously larger too. And I just kind of shake it along the bottom and pop it out of the grass, try to get their attention. A lot of times after you pop it out of the grass, you'll probably draw one in. I love how it like just sinks straight down. And then on the bottom, it like wiggles and shimmies. It's a really nice looking bait. I definitely want to come back to this body of water. I don't know if it's technically allowed to take a kayak on it, but I don't see any signs saying you can't. And there's so much bank here that you cannot fish from walking the banks. And so I think I might have to come back out here with my kayak and just see what happens. All right, I'm gonna actually rig up a flick shake, which is basically just a weighted wacky rig. We're basically to the point where we fished every finesse presentation besides a drop shot. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, why? Why do they keep ditching the worms? Oh, and of course, he came off too. That worm is right there. I might be able to just go grab that. Okay, I lost the fish, but I got my worm back, so I'm happy. Okay, I just completed a lap around this entire pond, and I think I could keep catching a bunch of bass on the finesse plastics, but what I'd rather do is actually fish with my ultralight for bluegill and panfish. I'm just gonna use a little 164th ounce mule jig with a small plastic. I've got a lot of confidence in that, and I'm gonna see what we can catch. Oh, and by the way, I'm loving this fanny pack. I know this video feels kind of like a joke, but the reality is this thing's been actually super convenient today. Big fan. I'll link it in the description so you can go take a look. If you don't want to look like a nerd, that's okay. That's your choice, but for me, I'm totally fine with it. Let's get back to fishing. I don't see any bluegill in here, but I'm sure there's some around. Oh, of course, it's a bass. <laughs> wow, look at the colors, my lord. This fish is straight up the prettiest bass I've caught all day. Look at that nice lateral line. He might be the smallest fish, but uh, he's the prettiest fish. All right, see you, buddy. I can't tell for sure, but I think this is a green sunfish on a bed right here. He's looking at it. Hey, he's playing hard to get. Got him. Oh, it's actually a pumpkin seed. I thought it was a big old green sunfish, but it's actually a pretty nice little pumpkin seed and it's gorgeous. He freaking chomped at that time. I might have to get my pliers out. And another testament to the fanny pack. I don't have to go dinking around so long. I can just quickly grab my pliers because they're literally right in front of me. And then bada bing, bada boom, I can get this fish back in as quick as possible. All right, pretty fish. Go ahead, go guard your bed. I just switched plastics up. Got him. Sight fished another little bass. <laughs> it's a good thing he's not big because if I had a big one on in this grass, he would pull me down in there and I would never get him out. Oh, you gotta love it, you gotta love it, you gotta love it. All right, little buddy. You're a small fish, but you're a fun fish. I love you. 
Oh, I'm getting exhausted out here in the sun. Also, I am wearing a backpack right now. It's just because I have camera gear in it. I wish I wasn't wearing it because my back is getting so sweaty and I hate it. Got something. Oh, it's a little bass. Little bass came out of nowhere. Honestly, I didn't feel a bite. I just, uh, I didn't see my chartreuse head anymore. Funny how when you start using these little tiny baits, you start catching the little bass about that size consistently. They clearly are feeding on a specific size of forage. Little minnows about that shape and that size, clearly these little guys like. So if you ever want to target like five to eight inch bass, obviously like a little inch and a half minnow is a great way to do it. And I tell you what, some of you think, why would you ever want to target a five to eight inch bass? Well, get yourself extremely light gear and then target small bass. And I promise you, it's like catching a three to five pounder on big heavy gear. I came back to my tree because this tree was good to me earlier. There's something tailing it. What is that? Oh, little bluegill has it. No way, I actually caught him. Look at that. Little buddy actually got the hook. How? I don't know how he got the hook, but he did. He's absolutely dinky. Okay, see ya, buddy. Got one. Oh my gosh. There's a bunch of little bluegill this size. <laughs> so small. Where are the big gills at? That guy's a dink. I don't see any bluegill bigger than this. Whoa. The dragonfly literally just like captured a bee out of the air and freaking killing it. What the heck? I didn't know dragonflies could do that crap. Oh my gosh. I turned off the camera for a second and what do I catch? An absolute micro. Hey, I'm proud of myself. This is awesome. It's um, probably four inches long. Total team dink member. Gotta love it, gotta love it. Yes, another dink. <laughs> I thought that there was gonna be more bluegill in here, but it feels like this place is just loaded with small bass and not a ton of bluegill. But I tell you what, I'll take whatever bites. Oh, I see a pumpkin seed on a bed. It's so far away. No way, I got him. I don't think that's actually the same fish. I think this was a bluegill next to the pumpkin seed's bed. That is a dinky, dinky bluegill. I got my eye on the prize though. I think there's a pumpkin seed over there. He's definitely bigger than this. No way. I cast it right up next to the pumpkin seed's bed and a freaking bass comes out of nowhere and comes gets it. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I'm looking for a little pumpkin seed and I get a nice little bass. I'll take the bass. Oh gosh, oh gosh. He's getting down into some brush. He's not all that big, but he can get into a lot of junk. Look at that guy. Ultralight largemouth. Can't get much better than that. All right, buddy. There you go. Oh, that was sick. I was reeling this in. A bluegill came and hit it. And then a bass, probably 14 inches long, just went screaming after the bluegill. I'm going to get him. Here we go. Here we go. Got him. <laughs> I love that so much. Oh my gosh, he's fighting so hard. He's not all that big, but he is fighting so hard. Oh my gosh, I'd love that so much. I basically had him nose down on the bottom. I did one little twitch and he hammered it. I'm getting exhausted out here, but I tell you what, this gives me a little bit of energy. Catching bass like that on ultralight, I'm always gonna get energetic about that. I love it. <laughs> there we go, another dink. Just an absolute stud. Got him. <laughs> Just a little guy. All right, this is a two pound test, so five foot ultralight. Every fish this size is a blast. Woo-wee! That was actually a pretty darn good fishing session. I was not expecting to come to one pond. I thought I was gonna end up fishing like three or four spots today, but I stuck it out right here and I had a blast. Also, when I got back in my car, I put on hand sanitizer and I didn't realize that I had a spot where a fish dorsal finned me and there's a little hole in my finger. And then the hand sanitizer got in the hole in my finger and it hurt really bad. With that being said, the fanny pack did not disappoint. The only thing that could make this thing better is if it was cooler looking. I mean, it almost looks too stylish. I wish it was like a nice bright green um, that 
that would be nice. Unfortunately, I just could find a black one and whatever. It was like 25 bucks. I'm not going to complain about it. If you want to be like me and rock the fanny pack while you fish, check it out in the description below. You know, I think you would look really cool. I think I would respect the heck out of you if you also wore a fanny pack. Okay, that's enough rambling. I'm going to go home, have a cold beverage, and relax. I hope you have a great day. We'll catch you next time. Boom, bam, bing, foul. Boom, bam, bing, foul. Boom, bam, bing, foul.